Uh, great. So you're going to want to pick a strong password, though. So I'm going to put in my, my password. I'm going to get it from somewhere else on my screen. But you're going to want to write this down somewhere, too, so you have access to it. You can reset your password once you've created a server, but you have to shut down your server to change the, the root password again. So just better to write it down now than have to go through that whole workflow of re restarting your server. So everyone with me so far. Mm -hmm. Gary, are you able to get to that step? <clears throat> Yeah, I'm as far as the password. Yes, yeah, so I'm good. All right, great. After a slow start, I'm back on track. <laughs> OK, great. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can add in backups if you want. If this is just like a test server that you don't really care about, you don't need to add them. You don't need to add a private IP. You can also do this stuff later if you want to change it. If the server turns into something that you want to use later, you can also resize it. So don't feel like if you wanted to use this for something later that you want to go with a bigger plan, you can resize it later and um, and as whatever project you're working on expands. So um, that's it. All you have to do now is hit create. That's on the right hand side and it's going to start creating your server. And I'm not going to save my credentials there. I, I'm sorry, but just to clarify, uh, you, you said you can go back and uh, change the add-ons? Yeah, you can go back and um, you can resize it if you want a bigger plan later on. Can um, you add backups later on? Yeah, you can add backups. Cool. So uh, from the like main tab, you'll see like your list of servers. Like I have a bunch of different, different ones. Um, this is the one I'm currently creating right now. And if I go there, uh, there's a bunch of like little tabs here. And for backups, like I can go there and enable them uh, by clicking that. And then also I can resize it later if I want to make it bigger. So I can resize it to whatever I want. So that's how you do that. I think it's fairly intuitive, but there's also a bunch of guides. Like if you get lost, um, I don't, the, the interface for Linode, um, it was recently updated. We had an older one before, but so I'm still getting used to it. I was used to the older one, so I don't know exactly where everything is, but most of the time you can just find it by clicking around. So, but yeah, you can change stuff after. Or you can just delete it and make a new one too, <laughs> so, which is what I usually do. Um, okay, everyone able to get your Linode deployed and running? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yep. So uh, after it's running, you'll see like in the right hand side that it says it's running. Um, also on the right hand side, you'll see the IP address. Uh, you're gonna wanna copy that down too and save that somewhere in your notes so that you can access it later. We can always come back to this though. Your root password, the password that you set we won't be able to access that again. We'll have to reset it if you don't have it or if you forgot it. But the IP address, we can always come back and see. But just to make it easier so you don't have to come back to this page, you can just copy it now and save it with your password. So, But that's it for now. Um, I'm going to go back to the slides. So we've deployed a server. Uh, nope, sorry. So we're gonna go through some basic commands now. Um, before we get started into that, I wanted to talk about the general structure of a command. So typically when using the command line, um, you, will be, you will type the command and if there's any options for that command, you'll put it after that. And then if there's any arguments for those options, you'll put it after that. So that's the typical flow. Some, most of the time, um, depending on what you're doing, the command will just be the command and you won't put any options for it. But sometimes you will be putting options and sometimes it, they don't have arguments, but then sometimes they will. So that's just the, the general structure though that you wanna look for. And we'll go through some examples of that a little bit later, but uh, the format's always gonna be command, option, argument. Some 
um, helpful ones to know right off the bat is if you're stuck on a command, most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time, you can run command dash dash help. Um, and that uh, gives a brief detail of the command and what it does. So just to show you an example really quickly. Um, so so I, can everyone see this? Um, Is it too tiny? I, I can see it. I can see it. Oh yeah, I see your command line top left. How's that? Mm -hmm. So, can you see? Can you see the uh, mm -hmm. team mux dash dash help? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, uh, <laughs> come on. Um, let's see. Let's pick another one. So, um, hmm. that wasn't a great one. Let's do, let's go to the server that I have set up. Uh, so, um, So I have a command here. It's called UFW, which we're going to learn what that is a little bit later. But um, next to it, I'm going to I'm typing dash dash help to just get some preliminary commands that I can do with this or uh, options that I can do with this. And it's going to display that to me on the terminal. So when I do that, I can see that um, the commands that I have available to me are enable, disable, default, logging, allow, deny, all kinds of stuff. But the point that I wanted to, to bring here is that if you're kind of stuck, most of the time you can do dash dash help, and that will give you some helpful messages or uh, commands that you can do uh, for that command. So another one that we're going to talk about right away off the bat is, um, hold on. Oh, actually, I'll talk about that, uh, that one a little bit later. But another point I wanted to, to drive home is that most names are fairly intuitive. We'll find that with some of the commands later. But if you had to take a guess at what a command would be, usually the name of the command is 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 going to be similar to what it does. So there's not all kinds of like crazy symbols or like acronyms that you have to know. Sometimes there is, but for the most part, it's going to be similar to what the command is actually doing. So in the example that I showed you previously, UFW um, stands for uncomplicated firewall. And that's just an acronym for, for what it is. So most of the time, if you had to guess, um, if you were like, I wanted to install you uh, uncom an uncomplicated firewall on my server, UFW would be not too far away from that since it's the acronym for that. So um, there's some better examples a little bit later, later on. Um, most of the time they are fairly intuitive and they follow this command option argument structure. And most pro most programs um, like Nano or a program called Less will tell you what to do. So that's another important point that I wanted to bring up is that Linux will mo most of the time tell you what to do. So if you're stuck, if you read uh, what's on your terminal, it will tell you how to get unstuck most of the time. So uh, I brought up Nano. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. But um, just to show you what it looks like and that concept, I'm going to open it up. So this is a text editor. And I've just opened up a file called test.txt. And I am in this program now, and I don't know how to get out of it. So if I look around, though, um, I can see on the bottom there's some, some helpful things. So the first one is get help. The second one is exit. Uh, there's another one that's useful called where is. So if you're trying to find something in a document, you can do where is. Um, there's another one, replace. I wanted to also point out that if you don't know what this symbol means, you can also search it on Google. But um, it just means the control key on your keyboard. So I am in this program now. Um, And I'm writing some text in my file that I've opened up. 
and I want to exit and I want to save it. So I look at the bottom and I see, oh, it says exit there. So that's how I exit. And it says control plus X. That's what that's what um, that means. And again, if you don't know how, if you don't know how to read that, then you, it would just be a one five five second uh, search on Google, and you'll you'll find it. Um, so if I do Control X to exit, it's going to prompt me if I want to save it, and I do want to save it in this case. So I'm going to say Y for yes because it's telling me what to do. So um, when I hit Y for yes, it's going to ask me what the name of the file should be. Um, and I can, by default, it's just going to use the one that I was editing. But if I didn't have a name, then I would type it in here. Or if I wanted to rename it, I could do that too. Um, I could add CMP here, that's my initials. Um, and then it's going to say, you sure you want to save the file under a different name? And I'm sure. So I'm going to say yes. And when I look for my file, I see it's there. So that's kind of the, the point of what I was trying to say is that Linux will usually tell you what to do. And if you don't know how to read it, you can search for it pretty easily on Google. So, um, so our first command that we're going to dive into is called SSH. And this is how we're going to connect to our servers. So SSH stands for Secure Shell Hosting. And it basically is a way to connect to your server over an encrypted network connection, which means it's more secure. Instead of it being like, readable by anyone, it's encrypted by default, which means that it's not readable unless you have the, the appropriate keys. So uh, that is what SSH stands for. It uses... Oh, mm -hmm. I think, Go ahead. I think it just stands for Secure Shell. Oh, really? But, yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Secure Shell. So <laughs> um, it uses port 22 by default. You can use other ports. And again, we're not going to get too much into what ports are. But this is one of the ones that you need to know, um, 22. So when we add our firewall later, you uh, will be adding in rules for port 22. And this is how we're going to access our servers via the terminal, by using this command. So how do I use it? Uh, we're going to access a shared server together. Um, so you're going to run the following command in your terminal. So if you could please open up your terminal. Um, and type in, I will drop it in the chat, but I wouldn't copy and paste it because the chat like has some different like encodings and stuff and it makes it weird. So I would just type it, so. Mean, that, is this what we should be using MOBA for? We, or you're just saying use any terminal? Yeah, for, uh, any terminal that you have should work, uh, but MOMA, MOMA I do know works well. Um, Gary, you said that you have PuTTY. Um, so for PuTTY, you have to open up how you connect to a server. Um, if you've used it before, then you probably know how to get there. Um, and you want to put in linuxclass.christinepook.net for that. And we don't have to CD and or navigate anywhere. Just no, open we're up just going to log in. Um, the password for the server is going to be this. I'm dropping it in the chat right now. How's everyone doing? Uh, I was able to log in. Cool. Uh, yeah. You should see something like this when you're logged in.
So we got one so far. We've got one what? Uh, one person logged in. Was it me? Yeah. Okay. I tried to do that screen S thing and it didn't really give me any feedback. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I think I'm in. Okay, cool. So we got two, two out of eight. I'm looking for the password. Oh, the password's yeah. in the chat. It's Linux at Hive76 at home, all lowercase, no spaces. I see it now. Okay, great. I'm sorry, can I see the command line again? Sure. Um, so the command is... SSH space mm -hmm. student at Linux class dot Christine Pook dot net. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, maybe I'm missing something really simple, but uh, when I run that, it says SHH command not found. Are you using MOBA? Yeah. Oh, and it's SSH. Oh, SSH. Duh. That's why. See? That's okay. Most Simple of the, problem. Most of the problems that I troubleshoot every day is like one word in a file somewhere. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Or one extra comma that shouldn't be there. Yep. Uh, Christine, I'm having trouble getting in through uh, Putty because it's not recognizing my keyboard on this computer for some reason. Could huh. you post the, um, the the thing to download? Yeah, one sec. Yeah, the one that you folks are using. Yeah. I'm just so used to using Putty, but for some reason it doesn't want to. Yeah, Putty is good. I used to use it at my last job a lot, but it, I don't know. I feel like it makes things like by trying to make things easier it makes things a little bit more complicated in my opinion that's, um, that's my life yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, i like this moba interface and the tabs and the directory it's very it. nice mm -hmm. it's um i i really liked it my my last job i had to use a windows computer and i basically lived in moba so I know microsoft just released a new there's a new windows terminal that integrates with the built-in linux support though Oh, really? That's, That's nice. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, uh, which one? The one that the one that everyone's using or the new one? No, the one you just mentioned, the newer. Uh, I think it's just called Windows Terminal, actually. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I just learned with Git Bash. So I'm always amazed that every other terminal is superior whenever I try a new one. Oh, yeah. I just use yeah. Bash out of habit, but it is very arcane. That's funny that you're the second person to say that to me. I didn't know Git Bash was that uh, popular. I think it's, I think the terminal that it actually, that it uses is the Sigwin terminal, is the terminal that comes with Sigwin, if I remember correctly. That's what MOBA uses too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. huh. Is everyone able to log in? Um. Did, did does your um um your screen look like this? Hold on. Uh, what's the password? Linux at five seventy six at home. Does it look something like this? Not quite. Um, uh, what does yours look like? What's like the text saying? Um, sorry, one second. I'm. I think oh, I, I almost got it. 
Come here, Pickle. Ryan, you said you're not having much success. Um, are you trying on, on MOBA? Uh, no, I am. I might be doing this entirely wrong. I was trying to do it from something called Blish. Oh, uh, I'm in the wrong. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can use that to access your server, but we're actually accessing um, a shared server, so not the one that you deployed right now. Okay. Uh, this one is going to be so that I can see what you're doing and help okay. you out if you're having trouble. Um, okay. So well, what you have to do is on your MOBA, on the MOBA application, mm -hmm. open it up. You should see a, like a command line by default, I think. Okay, so... This is a little behind the MOBA application. Is that something I was supposed to have downloaded beforehand? Or? Yeah, uh, I just dropped it in the chat. I'll drop it again. Hold on. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So whenever it, in MOBA, it tells me to type in the password. I like start typing and then no text is appearing on the That's screen. That's fine. Uh, that's actually just like, uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't kind of give you feedback on that, but you, it's actually typing. It's like, it's getting the password and then you hit enter when you're done typing the password. So that happened to my friends yesterday when I was going through this with them. Uh, and um, that's kind of what the expected behavior is. Okay. Christine, I finally have that piece of software loaded up here. So cool. the remote host is what again? I'm sorry. Uh, no problem. It is. You're, so you're going to want to type this. Don't copy and paste it because the chat has like some weird text encodings. And it's going to make your terminal act all funky. So just type type this in though. Um, it's just ssh space student at linuxclass.christinepook.net. Yeah, I tried to copy and paste it. I think that was probably one. Of yeah, don't don't do that. Um, it I don't know what encoding it has, but it has some something weird that gets carried over. So, I think Jitsi's interpreting it as an email address because it. Yep. <laughs> I would do it. Yeah. And then what was the password one more time? Um, it is Linux at Hive seventy six at home all lowercase. Again, don't copy this. Just write it. Mm hmm. All right, thank you. Cool, are you in? Yep. Nice. All right, almost, so we got two more left, I think. Um, we're not in Ryan and Gary, so mm -hmm. let me know how you guys are, are doing. Yep, so I'm working on the putting up, or installing MOBA right now. Great, sounds good. There was like a breakout room kind of feature with Jitsi, um, but unfortunately there isn't one. That, that might speed things up, but mm -hmm. it's kind of just the nature of doing these classes remote, so. I mean, at least it has full screen sharing, so if you run into trouble, you can just show, I yeah. can show you your screen. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I'm sure that's gonna happen later. I'm 100% yeah. I'm positive it will happen, so. <laughs> if we're I'm having ready. trouble logging in, I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any luck, Gary or Ryan? Well, yeah, here's, here's a question for you. Yeah, is there a reason why um, this wouldn't recognize my keyboard? Is there something that I'm missing here? Because I'm typing, but it's not going into the... Okay, uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what I think Tom was dealing with. Um, yeah. it, it actually is getting your input. It just doesn't give you good feedback. It's like really... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so hit enter, and then it should prompt you for the password again, and then type it in, um, and then it should work. 
Yeah, that is really strange. Is that just a MOBA thing or is No, that that, that is a I don't I think that's I mean sometimes depends on your terminal, but mine does the same thing, I think. Oh. So, if you look in Mm -hmm. It's a general Unix thing. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Jfred knows. So. Some terminals, I know iTerm on Mac OS shows you like a little key icon to show that it's waiting for password input. Yeah. But yeah. See, I just type my password and I hit enter, but you didn't see anything. So. Okay, Christine, our long national nightmare is over. Woo! All right. All right, we got one more to go. Ryan, how you doing? Uh, MOBA is starting up, so I'll just give it a minute, please. Oh, yeah. Apologies. Oh, no, no worries at all. I knew this is going to happen, so this is all part of the class. So That night, okay. not reading my keyboard was making <laughs> a little yeah, yeah, that really threw me for a loop. Yeah. There's, like, little things like that that uh, I don't really think about anymore, but my, my um, I did a practice yesterday with some friends, and um, and that really that tripped them up, too, so... It's just one of those things, you know? Mm -hmm. It's probably sure. a security feature, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. But it's it, it's confusing to not get that feedback that you're expecting. OK, yeah, so my MOBA has been fine right here. Mm -hmm. Hold on one second. Um, uh, Ryan, what were you saying? OK, so MOBA has launched on my computer now. So I want to go to the terminal. Yes. And open new tab or yeah, go, you can open a new tab. All right, and then what new session? Yeah. Okay. And then you want to type in this. Um, if you go to the chat, it's the last. It's the the second to last message. It's SSH. SSH student. Yeah, I have that written down. Okay. So let me try to uh, do that. So we we'll go to basic SSH settings. So that is the remote host. So it's. You're going to enter password. Yeah, it's not going to show you any input, but when you're typing it, it is actually accepting the password, and you just have to hit enter at the end. Okay, gotcha. Oh, there it goes. Hell yeah. This is great. Cool. <laughs> I did a thing. <laughs> I did this with two people yesterday and it took the same amount of time. So this is progress. Um, great. So let me see. We're all there. Perfect. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is on your terminal, you're going to type in the following. Um, if you can see my screen, the command is just screen uh, space dash capital S space and then your name. So I'm going to do Christine because that's my name. And it should bring you to a thing like this um, where it's just the, the shell prompt again. So let me know when you're there. And yep, I'm there. Much faster. Yeah. Yeah. Now that we're in there. So. Yep. I see it. I see you guys. You're there. Right. <laughs> so this is great because then this is going to enable me to uh, log into your session so I can help you out if you're having issues. So okay. um, let me just double check that we're all here. So we got David, Tom, Herbesh, me, Ian, J. Fred, Ryan. I don't. Ryan or Gary, I don't see you. Pretty sure that's everyone, though. Were you able to run this command? It, it's a screen space dash s space your name.
Did that work for you? See Gary. Any luck, Ryan? Of screen. Space dash S. Yeah, space capital ca capital S. S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Space of Christine. No, put your name. <clears throat> so just put Ryan. Okay. So the command I'm doing is just um, screen dash ls. So I'm looking at the available screen. So that's the um, kind of going back to that command and option. The option mm -hmm. in this case is dash ls. Um, and that means to list everything. So, so I see everyone is there now, which is great. Perfect. That's what we want. Um, I'm going to do a quick thing real quick real quick to make sure I am logged into your servers. Um, and I'm going to exit out of some of these. Uh, okay, you know what? I'll fix that in a minute. Let's just go to the, um, let's go to the, back to the slides. Okay, so we are logged into the shared server and we are on our screen session. So um, the first command that we're gonna wanna do is um, the man command. So the, what we're gonna type is um, man, man. <laughs> and what this is basically is uh, the man page is the manual page for Linux commands. And that tells you an overview of what the command is. So it's a really great reference for if you're, if you want to look up more option, uh, options for a command, or if you don't know what a command does, and you before you run it before you like mess something up, you want to like get an overview of what it does. The one that you're going to want to remember to do is man. Um, and so th when we're doing the man man command, we're looking up the man page or the manual page for the manual page. So it's very meta. But it's the one I like to start out with because when I first started getting into Linux, I did not look up things on the man page. I would look up things on Stack Overflow. And while Stack Overflow is great and it's a resource you're going to definitely use when you're getting used to Linux, um, it can sometimes be misleading. Uh, it doesn't have context of like what server you're using. And so you can try out random things and really mess stuff up, which is a great learning experience because then you have to fix it. But um, I always like to say, just take a quick peek at the man page. If you can't figure it out from there, look it up on Google. So if you press enter, you'll see that it gives you um, an overview of what the name is the synopsis. Uh, these are all the different arguments or options that are available. Um, and then it tells you even what kind of uh, arguments it will accept. Um, if you press the down arrow, you can navigate further down the page. Uh, so this gives a description um, of what the command or what the command you're looking up does. In our case, this is the manual page. So it shows us different sections of the manual. Um, it, it has different names. Um, it tells you how it's structuring the man manual. So some examples are man ls. It usually has examples. This is kind of when I'm looking at a manual page, I usually skip to the examples. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's good to it's good to get the context of what it is too. So, but usually the man page will have the examples here. It will show you different options and arguments that you can do. Um, so yeah, uh, this is no review of what it does. And I wanna go back to the point I made before where Linux tells you what to do. So you're currently in this manual page right now, but you don't know how to get back to the shell where you were before. So the way that you do that is um, if you look at the bottom here, you'll see that the manual page line, you know, whatever line you're on, it will tell you to press H for help or Q for quit. 
So we want to get out of here and go back to our shell prompt. So what we're going to do is hit Q on our keyboards, and that should bring you back to your shell prompt. So if everyone could do that. So Q, enter, or? Just Q. Uh, just Q. Q. Everyone get back to their shells. Uh, it says commands not found. Hmm. Uh, like you. Let me see. Let me take a peek. You're out of there already, so you're good. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I... So, just being inside the manual, just hit Q, yeah. right? Okay, because it's not working, but it's probably me. Just being dumb. Okay, I got it. It was just glitching. Sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. Oh. All right, I'm going to type clear so you have a. <laughs> that was my next step. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Um, everyone else good? Cool. So, so that's. Um, I can't stress it enough. The man page is great. Um, it's nice that it's all built in so you don't have to go to a browser. It's a really great reference point to just like look up very quickly, like what can I do with this command? What is it actually doing? What are some examples of it? Um, it's it's a great resource and um, Google's great, but this is like the original the original Google, you know. <laughs> um, there was a time before Stack Overflow, and this is what people used, and um, it really makes things a lot easier. I have spent I don't even know how many hours looking at like email forms and stack overflow pages and like like weird mailing lists from like 2004 when troubleshooting an issue when I could have just looked in the man page and found it in like a minute. <laughs> so uh, if there's one lesson that you can learn from, from me being resistant to using it, it's um, save yourself some time and take a look at it. So that's the first command. And that's what I like to start out with. The next command that we're going to look at is the ls command. And this shows you what is currently in your directory that you are in. So by default, when you log into a server, you can configure this and change it. But most of the time, you're going to be in your home directory. And so that is the, the directory where all of your like stuff for your user is. And um, when I say directory, that language might be a little bit confusing. But basically, it's um, just a folder. So if you're on um, Mac or Windows, I think on Windows, it's called like File Explorer or something. But um, for me, it's a MacBook, and I'm using Finder. But this is a directory. This is my home directory. Uh, this is like all the stuff that I have there. That's basically what we're doing, but we don't have uh, a nice graphical thing to look at. We're just using the command line. So um, why don't you go ahead and type in your terminal ls, and you should see some stuff there. <clears throat> Let me know if anyone's having any trouble. All good. Yeah, cool. yeah. It looks like I'm getting I'm getting a result. Cool. So it shows Josh, Christine, and Vinny. Yep, that was my cool. friend who helped me out yesterday. <laughs> um, your names will soon be there too. <laughs> um, so uh, next one is going to be again that command option uh, structure that I talked about before. We're going to do ls dash la. And what this does, it lists a detailed version of what's in the directory. Now, to find out what LA actually does, we could look at the man page, but I'll save that for you guys to do on your own time later. Um, but basically, um, it just gives you a more detailed output. So if you go ahead and do that ls-la, um, you should see something like this. Uh, oh. 
<laughs> what did you do? Uh, put in the space and uh, yelled at me. <laughs> as terminals like to do. Yeah, well, that's the great thing about Linux is that it usually tells you when you messed up. Most of the time. Not all of the time, but most of the time. And I'd be like, hey, don't do this. <laughs> it was just like a reflex to hit space. Yeah. Funny. I hit space and it actually worked for me. It didn't work when I didn't hit space. Oh, did you not put a space between ls and dash la? Yeah. Yeah, I, that'll... Put, yeah, I put a space between the dash and la just like by reflex of like... I yeah. Think. Yeah, yeah. It was like, no! Oh, I see J. Fred says hi. <laughs> um, but uh, but you should see something like this. Uh, let me go to another thing if you're having trouble. Anyone have any issues? On my end. Cool. Um, okay, great. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about what this overview is. Like you can, there's so many options that you can do with LS. It's crazy. Um, I discover new ones all the time. Um, if you look in the man page, you can, you can find them all or search on Google too, to find some, from some nice ones. But, um, just to give you a brief overview of what, what's on here, um, on the left side, you have, um, the permissions of your file. This is important for, security reasons and when you have a server set up if you want some of your files to be accessible and other ones not to be then you're going to have to have the correct permissions set up i'm going to link some guides on permissions and stuff because that that is also another rabbit hole to go down but uh most of the time if you're installing a program it will do the right permissions by default but this is what this is what is uh, that's what those DRWX things are. These are it's saying if you have read write permission or read permission um, or execute permission, which means you can like execute it if it's like a program or something like that. So that's what that is. Um, uh, then you will see student student, and this is actually your user and your group. So by default, you are in the group of your user. In our case, the user is student because um, I created that user account, and that's um, that was the name. That's the name of the user. So that's what that is. Um, again, sometimes that will be important for your application. For example, if you want to follow along later and do a WordPress server, that is obviously uh, going to be too long for this class. But you can do that, um, and and you'll have to know a little bit about users and groups. Um, but the guided link goes really into detail for that. So, um, but that's what that is. Um, next to that is the size of your file. So you'll see um, on the test2.txt files, a couple of them don't have anything in them. So they're, they're listed as zero. And um, a couple other ones that I have uh, do have stuff in them. So they're listed as higher numbers, but that's what that is. And then um, on the right, is the date and the time that the file was created, which can be important for, for different security reasons or just even to like know what happened on the server. Um, and then the file name, which is what we saw with the ls command before. So ls is like the, um, <laughs> uh, ls is like the, um, uh, just like the basic version, but you can get really advanced. If you wanna like view, if you wanna sort by like when a file was edited, uh, last, or if you want to see only certain files, you can do that. Um, the options are like literally, there's, it's endless. So, um, but that's the ls command, and that's really important because in order to do stuff on Linux, you have to know where you're at, and to know where you're at, use the ls command. So, any questions so far? Okay, cool. So the next command we're going to do is the make directory command. And um, this is going back to what I said before about how most of the time you can kind of guess the name or you can at least figure out what the command is by looking at the name. So in this example, uh, mkdir stands for make directory, which means I'm literally making a folder. And that's what the command does. It just makes a folder. So um, for the command though, it just shortened down to make directory instead of writing that whole whole thing out. It just is mkdir. 
So, <clears throat> so if you do that, if you write the command mkdir, put a space, and then you put an argument. And for this, just put your name. I'm going to put Christine uh, 2 because I already have a folder there. So I'm going to do that. And then if I do my ls command again, I can see my folder there. And I see yeah, you guys, you guys have made some folders too, which is great. J. Fred, Ryan, Tom, or Gary. Cool. So it looks like most of us have folders. Anyone have any issues with that? Cool. Moving on. Um, we're going to get a little bit uh, more into it. We're going to create a file. Um, but before we do that, we're going to CD into the directories that we made. So the name of the directory that we did was just our name. Uh, and to get into it, we have to change directories to, to get into that directory. So that's where the, the, the command CD comes from. It stands for change directory. So to do that, um, I'm going to CD into my folder that I just made called Christine2. So I'm going to type out CD space Christine2. And you'll see on my um, terminal, if you can, um, that uh, it's a student at Linux class colon uh, tilde backslash Christine2. So that tells me that I'm in my folder right now. But if I wasn't sure, I could do ls uh, dash la, and it will also um, well it will it will print out the contents of my folder. And I know that it's not the previous folder I was in because I had stuff in there, and this doesn't have anything because we just made it. So, does anyone have any issues with that? <laughs> I have a question. Um, what are what is the drwxr dash xr dash x? So that is um, file permissions. Um, okay. So I don't want to get too much into that, but I'm going to link some stuff um, for 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 you to read into later. But basically, cool. it basically says like, do you have read write access to this file? Um, and if so, um, like. Uh, can you execute commands on it? That kind of stuff. Um, okay. One useful thing, uh, in this case, it doesn't matter as much because Christine's terminal has um, colors. But in case you're using a terminal that doesn't have colors, the D on the far left means it's a directory instead of a file. OK, okay cool. Yep. There's um, some other things like uh, we'll tell you um, if it's like yeah, we'll tell you the type of file, the type of file or folder it is. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'll link some stuff so that you can look into that later. So, how's everyone doing? So far, so good. Cool. Good. Great. Um, so we're in our directory, and now we're gonna make a file, and we're going to do that with the touch command. This is a really simple way to. If you're testing something out on a server and you want to make sure that you have read write access to that folder, you can do it very easily with the touch command because if you don't have read write access, you won't be able to create a file. Um, this is also just good to, to, if you need to put some blank files in a place, you can do this very easily with this command. So um, the command is just touch. And then um, you can write like whatever you want as a file name. I'm just going to do test.txt because I'm not original. <laughs> and then if I do the ls command again, I'm going to see that my file's there. So you can you can make multiple files if you wanted to. You can do uh, touch test one dot txt test two dot txt and it's going to create all those all those files so you can like you can make as many as you want with this command but these are just um, if we do the ls this dash la command again 
you'll see that there's nothing in them. They're just empty files. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, moving along. We have about 25 minutes left, and I, I do want to get to the point where we can access your servers that you made and deploy um, deploy something to them. So I might skip over a couple of these, but these slides are going to be available to you so that you can refer to them in the future. Um, I'll also link some guides that will make it easy to to um, to look up the commands that are that are good to know when you're first starting out. So um, another one that um, I want to show you is if we want to get back to our folder that we were previously in. Um, or close out the folder that we're currently in, um, we can do a command called cd um, dot dot. And this will take us up one folder in our current um, working directory. Uh, and that will bring you back to your home directory. So um, I did that. And now if I do ls again, I can see that I am back in my home directory where I started. Another thing to know is if you want to get back to your home directory, uh, there's a little shortcut. Um, if you just type in uh, CD and then enter, you'll you'll be brought back to your home directory. So that's just another that's just a, like a, a kind of like hidden thing. I actually only learned that maybe six months ago or something. So, <clears throat> but but to get back to to go up a folder, it's just CD space dot dot. I often do this when I'm like thinking in a terminal. I'll just go like, <laughs> and, then I'll, and then I'll go back. Uh, and I, I do that a lot. So it's a good one to know. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. So if, is everyone back in the home directory? I believe so. Cool. So if you, if you do LS again, you should see a bunch of stuff there. Yeah, like Christine, David, Gary, Josh, Nakashi. Yep. yep. Cool. So um, the next command we're going to do is called the cat command. It stands for concatenate. Um, but I like it because I like cats, and I have a cat. His name is Miles. Um, <laughs> uh, but it was like kind of like my favorite one when I was first learning Linux because I thought it was cool that there was a command called cat. But basically what it does is it takes whatever file that you – give it, and it prints out all of it on the terminal. So for our example, we're going to do a test with um, one of the files I made earlier called test1.txt. And to view what is in that file, I'm going to write cat space test1.txt. And I, I had wrote before, hello, this is a file with a question mark. So if you were able to run the command correctly, you should see the same output as me. So if you're curious, you can like, while you're here, you can like to look at other files. So I can do cat Christine. Oh, and I cannot type. This is a document. This is for our Linux class. I'm typing words. <laughs> um, this is, uh, I think I wrote that earlier. But, but if you're using the cat command correctly, you can view what is in a file. And it's just cat space file name. So anyone have any issues with that? Cool. That makes sense. Yeah. Ooh, so what is going on? What did, what happened? Who is that? That's me. It's Ryan. I okay. Let me I, I, I use the, the scrolling wheel on my uh, mouse and all of a sudden it shot out a million little Oh, uh, so that's going through your history. So uh -huh. if you want to just exit out of whatever you ended up running, just do Control C. Okay. And that'll get you back to the, your command prompt. Cool. Bash prompt. Cool. Nice. All right. So um, uh, another one that's similar to cat, instead of printing out all of the, the data in a file, 
it um, allows you to view the document in a file and navigate through it the same way that you would, or, or a very similar way that you would do for the man page um, is less command. And so for our example, we can do the same thing. Uh, instead of cat, it's less and uh, space and then the file name. So for our example, we're gonna do test1.txt. And um, there's not much in here, so it's just going to say, hello, this is a file. Um, but if you uh, did the backslash command, you should be able to search. Um, and then I search for hello, and it highlighted on hello. Um, and like most things in Linux, you can exit out of this by hitting the Q, Q letter on your keyboard or you can do, I think control C two works. Nope, you have to hit Q. So um, for a file that's that small, usually cat is the better way to go. But if you're, if you're not sure, um, I usually start with less because um, that's for me the most comfortable way because I can search through the document. I can uh, look for certain things, um, it's just, what I'm used to, but you can use both to view the contents of a file. So I think in our home directory, there's some other files we can maybe take a look at. Um, I think probably the bash RC. So if you do, if you do the command less space and then a period bash RC, you should see something, you should see a little bit more text. So you can navigate this by clicking your down arrow or your up arrow. Um, and then if you hit the backslash command, you can search. So I'm going to search for history. And um, when I hit enter, um, it highlights on hist. So and then if I want to quit again, I just hit the Q and I'm out. <laughs> Anyone have any issues with that? So I, I think I must have typed in something wrong because it's see it, it it's giving me the word end. Um, yeah. if you if you t hit the Q letter again, you should be able uh -huh. to get out of there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Cool. Cool. So that's a, another really good one when you're getting familiar and you just want to read a file. You don't want to make any changes to it. You're gonna want to use cat or less. Um, I'm not going to talk about these because we don't have enough time, but these are some other good commands that can help you navigate the file system. Okay, so this is going to be a fun one. Um, uh, one of the commands that people learn early on usually is the who command. And this tells you who is logged into the server with you. So we're all the user student. So you're going to see a bunch of students on here. Um, but uh, this tells you who's on the server. And a, a fun thing that we can do is send some messages to each other. Uh, we can use the command called wall. Uh, so it's just it's just wall space. Um, you put a quote and you can say, hello. <laughs> That's from Jfred. Um, and I'm saying hello. I'm going to say hello, Jfred. <laughs> Since we're all the same user, is that what's uh, Jfred saying hello? Yep. Kind of like canceled my command prompt. Uh, you know, if you hit enter, you should be able to exit out of the message. So, um, but yeah, because we're all the same user, it's a uh, it's a little weird, but cool. Unix, the original social network. That's correct. <laughs> Before there was the internet, um, browsers. Hi, Ian. <laughs> um. So that's a fun one to do if you're uh, you're on a server with a lot of people. Sometimes my coworkers, if I know that they're on a server with me, I'll like send them a message. <laughs> Hello from hell. Although cool. if they're in a text editor, they'll start printing over their text over their editor. This is true. <laughs> so it's not always great to do, but it's kind of fun when you're learning. So, um, cool. Um, oh, what is up, my fellow computer? You. <laughs> what is that? Something glitched. <laughs> yeah, if you want to get out of the message, just hit enter. You can you can do that too. Whenever you're in a terminal, you can do like enter and or it'll it's just control gonna, C or is control probably. C. Yeah. Um 
so uh, we already talked about Nano a little bit. Um, I'm fortunate we don't have enough time to get too into that. But before we move on to our last section, bef- uh, just to like make your life a little bit easier, some some tricks that you might want to learn is um, the history commands. This one I use. I I don't even know how many times I type this into a terminal per day. Um, but you just type history, and you can see your history. And so, like, if you were doing a command um, and it was, like, kind of complicated and you wanted to refer to it before, or you logged into a server that other people were using and you wanted to see what commands were run, um, you can do the history command and it will show you, which is um, a really great reference. Yeah, and you can even search through this, too, using grep, but uh, but I, I'll leave that for you, for you to look into later. Another, another nice one is the up arrow. You might have seen me do this a couple times today, but the up arrow lets you circle through your history, um, like through your last command. So it'll just go through like what your last commands were. And um, if you wanted to do that command again, you can use the arrow on your left side to like go edit it. And then you can rerun the command so I can do that one again. Christine, um, just, Christine just real quick, mm-hmm. uh, to get out of who, mm-hmm. I'm stuck in who purgatory at the moment. All I have is a is a greater than symbol. Okay. Uh, hit uh, control C. Control C. Okay. Yeah. I tried the Q, trying to get out of that. Yeah. yeah. So try control C. Are okay. you able to? I'm good again. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Control C. That's on next on my list. If you want to cancel any command that you don't want to run, or if you're someplace that you don't want to be, usually control C will get you out of it. Um, <laughs> Uh, so it's a great one to know. So, <laughs> okay. Um, control C will usually get you out of it. It's, it's, it's good. It's a good one to know. Uh, another really nice one, um, especially if you're navigating the file system, um, is the tab for autocomplete. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, so let's say that I want to go back to that directory I made in the beginning um, called Christine2. So I'm going to do cd space um, ch and hit tab on my keyboard. And that's going to automatically fill in Christine. Because in the folder that I'm in, the there is two things named Christine. So it knows that it's going to be one of them. So it like automatically fills it in, which is great, especially if you're lazy like me. Um, Tab is like the best thing. <laughs> um, and then um, I can hit tab again and we'll show you what options that I have. So I can do Christine or Christine two. So I wanna go into Christine two. So I'm gonna hit two and then tab again and we'll fill out the rest of it for me. And then I hit enter and I'm in my in, in my um, folder that I made. So it's a really great way to quickly navigate um, your terminal. So tab autocomplete, it's wonderful. It will make your life so much easier. Not having to type out stuff, it's, it's great. Um, yeah, so I had another break time scheduled. Um, before we get into that, I think we should get over the hump of accessing our servers because um, that will take a little bit of time. And then once we're all in our servers, we can quickly go through the rest of the demo that I had set up and um, install an application. So the hard part will be accessing our servers. So before we start our our break, um, what we're going to do is getting all kinds of messages. (laughs) Uh, We're going to exit out of this. out of this server. So to exit out of it, you can just literally type the command exit. And um, you might have to do it twice. And you, so you just do exit again. Screen is terminating. Yep, that's what you want. Um, okay. And then you want to type it again. Exit again? Yep. <clears throat> Sorry. You should get to a point where it says like, Connection to server Linux or Linux class dot is closed. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Hmm. It brought me back to a smiley face. Oh, um, what you could also do is just like close out of that tab on MOBA and just start uh -huh. a new session too. Okay. That's not ideal, but if you are having trouble exiting, you can also do control C to exit out of the smiley face. Um, is everyone back to their computer, not on the server anymore? Yep, I am. Okay, great. Yep. Cool. So uh, we want to connect to the servers that we made um, before. So to do that, we are going to use the SSH command again. So you should be back on your local computer. Um, it's going to look different for everybody. Mine looks like this. I know I'm back home. Um, also on my, my particular setup, it tells me that I'm on my uh, C. Pukrovsky, Christine thing. That's the name of my computer. Anyway, um, it's going to look a little bit different for you. But don't worry. If, you're, if, it, if you were able to disconnect from the server, you shouldn't see the student at Linux class anymore. That means you're still on the server. So, so you want to type in ssh space root um, at, and then after the at symbol, you're going to want to put that IP address that you got when you were deploying the server before. Um, if you remember, I asked you to save it somewhere so that you could access it again. But if you didn't, I will show you how to access it. Just hit enter. Uh, yeah. You might get a message that says the authenticity of this host, something, something. You want to type yes. So for a remote host, do you want to put in our IP address or it's the, the name of the... Uh... You want to put in your IP address. So I'm going to create a server for myself right now. So I'm doing the same. You guys already created a server, so just ignore this. Yep. Um, but I'm creating a new one for myself. Actually, I think I did create one. Uh, yes, I did. So uh, my IP address is this thing over here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna log into mine right now. So it's gonna look like this: ssh, SSH space root at, and I'm gonna enter my IP address. Um, for me, it's four five dot three three dot nine four dot one nine six. You don't have to put anything after it; just the IP address. Um, and now if I'm successful, it's going to ask me for my password. And this is the one I told you to write down before. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that you can log in. So I'm going to put in my password. And you should be brought to something like this, where it says root at localhost. And you should see um, Debian, Linux on there. That's the distribution we were talking about earlier. Um, but if you see the root at localhost, you're you are on the server. How's everyone doing? Man, good. Uh, it's all I'm there. all good. Yeah, I'm all in. Oh, yeah. Anyone having any issues? Uh, I'm having a little hard time logging into my own server. Yeah. I've got the IP address. I have the IP address written down. Okay. So I tried entering that. It's asking for a password. I didn't. Yeah. So that's going to be the password when you created the server. Right. Um, it's, uh, if you remember, like down, like towards the end of the page, it said like password. It's going to be okay. that password. OK. Let's see. Gary and Ian, were you able to get in? Yes. Cool. Yes, I'm logged in. Great. Is everyone comfortable with going about like 10 minutes over? Yeah. 
I'm yeah, good with fine that. With me. Okay. Cool. Sorry. I I I knew it was gonna take a little bit of a long time to like troubleshoot. Um, but I do wanna at least leave you with something that you can build off of. So um once we get into the server though, it should be really easy because it's just gonna be a couple commands, so Ryan, you in? Uh, working on it. Okay. Did you have to reset your password? That's what I'm doing right now. Okay. All right. Well, while you're doing that, I'm just going to take like a quick like two-minute break just to uh, grab some more water, and then okay. I'll be right back. And then by that point, you should be able to, to log in, and we can go through the rest of the tutorial. So, mm -hmm. all right, cool. I'll be right back. All right. Um, Ryan, were you able to log in? Uh, trying to. So I tried to reset my password, and my computer is having a hard time simply opening up Gmail. Oh. It's yeah. that bad. I'm pretty sure the hard drive is just toast. Uh, well, um, do you mind if we continue on and, and maybe you can try oh, again? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Well, if you have any trouble when you try when your computer is working again later, just um, you can send me an email and um, I can try to help so you much. out. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Okay, so um, we're at the last last steps here. Um, so one of the first things I like to do when I get a, a new server up for the first time is I always update everything um, just so I know that I have the the latest. And most the the most secure packages that are available on the on the server that I'm running. So on Debian and on Ubuntu and on Raspbian, the command for this would be um, apt update first. And what this is going to do is going to look at the source list that we talked about earlier, and it's going to see what packages on my system can be updated. Um, and then at the end of the command, you'll see it says 10 packages can be upgraded. If you want to look at what those packages are, Linux tells you what to do here. And for that command, you'd have to do apt list upgradable. But we all know that we already want to update. So um, the next command that we're going to run is apt upgrade. So it's just apt update and apt upgrade. Before it installs anything, it's always going to check with you if that's what you want because sometimes it's not what you want so in our case it is what we want so i'm going to say yes so christine are we updating or upgrading so we do an update first to yeah. get the um the latest packages 
Um, and then it will tell you what can be upgraded after that. So we do an update, upgrade. So it's going to usually take um, about a minute or so, depending on how long it's been since you last updated. Some word of caution, though, if you are like in a work environment or something and you do this, you may not want to do this because sometimes it can break things. But if you're deploying a new server, you should do this off the bat. And then later on, when the server has been around for a while, you might want to plan out when you do updates because in case there's anything wrong with it, you m might not have the ability to roll back. Uh, so just some word of caution there. <laughs> so Christine, after we do the um, uh -huh. app uh, update, mm -hmm. and then I see where it's listing everything, that the update hasn't started, right? No, so you have to run the command apt upgrade after you do apt update. Gotcha. Upgrade. Like that. I'm over. And then it will download everything. Yes, our machine is a Debian server. So I reset my password on mm -hmm. uh, on Linode, and I know I had it correct. So then I tried logging in. Mm -hmm with my IP address and it says access denied and I know for a fact the password is correct. Okay, are you sure that you're doing SSH space root at your IP address? Uh, so, just to be, also to be clear, it's the, the password for the server isn't necessarily the same as your pass, as the password for Lino, for your Linode account. When you when you did the reset for the password, did you did you do it from? Um, let me show you. Yeah, I reset um, the password from the Linode website. Okay, for the website. Yeah. So the way that you would do it for your server is when you're logged on, and mm -hmm. you go to the Linode's tab, and then you find the server that you're working on. So in my case, it's this one. Um, you want to go to, I'm pretty sure it's rescue. Nope, nope, not that one. Uh, settings, reset. You want to go to settings and then reset root password. And then here you can enter a new password. And this is for the server only, not for your okay, account. The server, not the website. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, that's how you reset your root password. But um, to do that, it's going to have to shut down your server and then reboot it. Um, or you might have to shut it down yourself because it can't do it while it's um, online. So just heads up there. Um, everyone able to upgrade their servers? Yep. Cool. Yep. Um, the next one that we're going to do is we're going to install a package. Um, just for fun, we're going to start out with that one that I showed you in the beginning of the class. It's called Ka Kaose, uh, and it's um, to install it and to install any package, um, you want to know the name. In our case, we know the name. It's Kaose. So we're going to do apt install Kaose. I'll type it in the chat, but don't copy and paste it again because it gets weird. So, um, everyone able to install that? I got it in. Cool. Yeah, it went through on my side. So now, for fun, you can do the command kause, and you can put whatever you want, intro to Linux class, um, or with quotes around it. And, uh, hmm, I just downloaded it. Why? This command not found for me. I got the same message. Mm -hmm. Same. Uh, did I spell it wrong? I might have spelled it wrong. Let me check. One second. Uh, huh. 
Huh. How to install. So this is another tip. Uh, mm -hmm. Always just looking it up. <laughs> huh. It should be another one. Looking at the man page right now. Oh, you might have to do dash F, I think. Nope. I don't know. Well, uh, I'll try to figure that out in a second, but <laughs> now, I I thought that would be cute, but I guess not. And, uh, no. It should be, I think, cause of, cause of. Oh. Cause and uh, yeah, that's the name. Uh, nope, I'm not getting it. Uh, nope, it should be it should be that. I don't know. I don't know what's up. That's weird. Anyway, um, I don't want to stay on that. But um, the next one we're gonna. We're going to do it the same way. Um, we're going to go back to that UFW command that I showed you earlier. Uh, that is going to be apps install UFW. And uh, that should start downloading right away. So is everyone able to run that? Yep. Cool. Um, so what UFW stands for is uncomplicated firewall. And this basically allows you to very easily set up a firewall um, so that you don't get hacked on your server. So this is like the second thing I like to do right off the bat because um, I don't want to get hacked. So, <laughs> um, so some things that you need to know are the ports for uh, some standard protocols. We're not gonna get into how they work, but it's really easy to get it up and running yourself. Uh, there's a guide here that I linked, but um, this is just like the, the most basic um, way to get started is um, with the commands U UFW, that's calling the command that we just installed. And then, um, allow, and then the protocol, uh, which is in our case, our first one that we're gonna do is SSH, because if we don't do that and we enable a firewall and we don't allow SSH to happen, that means we're not gonna be able to get into our server. So we wanna do that <laughs> first. I have done that more times than I can count. <laughs> it's not So fun. we just need to type UFW allow SSH? SSH. Yeah. And to know that you've done it correctly, it should give you some feedback after it says rules updated. Mm -hmm. If it didn't, it didn't add the rule. Hmm. Still not working for me. It's weird. So is everyone able to add an SSH? Yeah, I was able to. Okay, cool. Um, the next one is um, HTTP. So again, it's the same syntax. It's the command, the option, option, and then the argument. So in our case, the command is UFW. The option is allow. And the argument is HTTP. So uh, again, it should tell you if it added the rules. So in my case, it says rules updated. 
And we're going to add in HTTPS too, because even though we're not going to be enabling that on our server, um, in the future, if you choose to use the server for something, it's good to have it in there. So it's going to be the same same setup though. Um, instead of HTTP, it's going to be HTTPS. And those are the three ones I like to add right off the bat. Um, usually I will go and add more rules as I'm working through an application and I find out what things I need to have open, but those are the, the good ones to start out with for most servers. So we have added the rules um, and we want to enable them. And the way that we do that is with um, UFW uh, enable. So it's just UFW uh, enable. It's going to say, command may disrupt existing SSH connections. These are for the people who didn't add uh, the rule for SSH. <laughs> um, if you didn't add that, you're going to lose your connection when you say yes. So you want to really double check that you've added that. So let's say no for now. Um, and we want to just triple check that we've added the allow SSH rule, because we don't want to get locked out of our server. So I typed no, and it aborted the command. So to double check that we have it, you can do UFW status. Um, hold on one second. Uh, status verbose. So we're going to type UFW status verbose. OK, it doesn't list out the ones. It did it yesterday. I don't know. Demo, demo gods are not working in my favor today. Um, see. Verbose for me is printing out the port numbers and then TCP and actions and from. Cool. Well, that's good that it's working for you. I don't know what <laughs> my server is up to today, but... Um, does the uh, firewall have to be enabled to use the verbose and status? It might. It might be. Um, I might have had it enabled before. So, if you hit yes for that, um, you should see it now. So, is everyone able to do that? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. So now we have our firewall set up. We can move on to. Uh, setting up an application. Um, and the one that we're going to do is called Cockpit. What this does is, uh, I'll send the link in the chat. But what this does is it, um, it allows you to have some insight into the health of your server. And it, to do that, it runs like this um, web application. And so we'll be setting up a web application, but it's only a couple of commands to get it up and running, which is pretty neat. So, but the first thing that we need to do is install Apache, uh, and that will be our first test. So to do that, we're gonna do uh, apt install Apache 2. I'll copy this and paste it into the, the chat too. Um, and you want to say yes to the packages. So um, after it's done downloading, um, you should see like a similar output to what I'm seeing here. Uh, we have to enable it, but I want to make sure everyone's downloaded it first. Yeah, I had no issues. It's all set. Yep. So uh, to enable it, um, the first thing we're going to do is um, write this command system ctl enable apache2. And that, what that's going to do is make it so that when our server is rebooted, apache still starts on reboot.
I'm just going to write out the other ones that we're going to do right now. So, um, the next one that we're going to do is system CTL start Apache 2. And this isn't going to give you any feedback, unfortunately. But that's a good thing, because that means it worked probably. But if you want to double check, what you can do is do system CTL status Apache 2. And this will tell you the current status. And for me, it says running. Um, and that's great, because I want it to be running. So uh, to exit out of this, you hit the Q. Everyone able to start up their server? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, great. So now for the really cool part, this is uh, this is going to be cool to see your first server set up. Um, if you go to a web browser, um, in my case, I'm going to go to Firefox, but you can go to any web browser you want. And in the URL bar, where um, you usually put like a, a domain name, uh, like google.com to get to a website, you're gonna wanna put in your IP address of your server. So in my case, it's 45.33.94.196. And you should see a page like this that says it works, which means your web server is working, which is great, which means that this is on the internet and you are hosting this and you set it up yourself. So does everyone see that? Yep. Cool. Hey, Christine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm real sorry. I had to step away uh, for a little bit. I'm mm -hmm. looking at the chat and from APT install to mm -hmm. status Apache 2, are those the four commands that yeah. I missed since we logged into our own servers? Yeah. Awesome. I'm yeah. Uh, processing now. Thank you. No problem. So we have an Apache server, which is great. But we want to do a little bit more than that. So we're going to just do a couple more things to get our service um, cockpit running. And uh, to do that, we're going to follow this guide that I linked in the channel. So you're going to want to go to that website. And um, it will bring you directly to the section called Debian. Um, and um, I actually want to see if it's included in Debian 10 by default. So just real quick, I'm going to do apt install cockpit. It, it is. So we actually don't need to, to do the first command um, where it says echo. Um, or we don't have to do update. All we have to do is apt install cockpit. So it's going to install a bunch of stuff. And, and where did you say we go on our browser to find uh, our server? Uh, you just go to the IP address of it. So whatever IP address that you use to SSH into your server, you're going to put that same IP address in the in the in your web browser. <clears throat> so, everyone able to download Cockpit? Yep, mine's installing right now. Cool. Mm -hmm. Same. So I'm gonna, yeah. it works. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, you did that. Um, I'm gonna put the rest of the commands in the chat. So we're gonna have to do a couple things to be able to access this application that we just did. Um, David, I'm gonna put in the command to install it for you. It's that. Uh, oh. The next one that we're gonna do is UFW. So for cockpit to work, we're gonna have to uh, allow it in our firewall. So the command for that is that UFW enable 
And then we're going to do the same system CTL command for getting the cockpit application running. So enable cockpit system CTL start cockpit system CTL stuff. Okay, so first thing we got to do is allow it to work in our firewall. So to do that, we're going to go back to the UFW command that we did before. And instead of doing HTTP or SSH, we're actually just going to give it the port numbers that we want. And this is because that application requires those ports to be open for it to work. So um, to do that, it's going to be UFW allow uh, 9090. And you should get the same prompt again that you got before where it says the rule was added. So to re-enable the firewall with the changes that you made, because it doesn't do it automatically. You have to, every time you make changes to your firewall, you have to re-enable it. You're gonna do UFW enable. And it's gonna give you the same prompt, but you wanna say yes. Um, and then you can do UFW status to look at it and make sure that the 9090 is added, which in our case it is, so. Everyone with me? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, cool. So then we're going to go through the same workflow again for adding in this application that we just installed. So we did this for Apache 2, which is our web server. And that was just to test out that it was running. Now we're going to do it for the cockpit service. Um, and it's going to be the same workflow, though. So it's going to be system CTL enable cockpit. Uh, hmm. I was getting a similar yeah, I the same thing. Well, when I did this yesterday, I did it um, with a back port, so it might be a little bit different. Hold on one second. Um, let me see. It might be better to follow the. Yeah, I'm getting UFW command not found. Oh, did you install it? I must not have. My bad. I installed yeah. cockpit. Was that way up the lesson when we were talking about it earlier? Yeah, yeah, that one is uh, up there. Okay, so sorry. Uh, we're gonna have to go back to that guide and reinstall cockpit with the uh, the one how it's suggested. This is another thing, another lesson um, is that you probably should follow the guides. <laughs> um, <laughs> Although the the guide that you linked looks like it's for Debian nine. Yeah, so. I just I just looked up one for Debian ten. It's the same one though. So okay, it's only in the in the nine in the stretch back port, so. Okay, so the first one that we're gonna do is um, we're gonna put the sources. Um, if you follow that link, I'll drop it in the channel again. Would I just do apt-get install UFW? Yeah. Okay, was everyone able to do this echo command? Yeah, I'm in the process here. Okay. It doesn't give you any feedback, right? Nope, no feedback. Okay. Then yeah, um, I, think I got it. Cool. Uh, we might have to, we have to clean up what um, the package that we downloaded before. So. Um, before we do the update one, we should remove the the older one. So we're going to do apt remove purge uh, and then cockpit is the name of it. So I will type that in the channel. Remove purge. And that should remove everything that we downloaded before. Okay, should be okay now, I hope. <laughs> um, 
So after you've run the echo command, you have to do the update again. Um, and that's like the, the first command that we did on this server. So that's just going to be apt update. Also, Christine, mm -hmm. uh, when you installed Cockpit from Debian, mm -hmm. it's, it's automatic. It started by default. Oh, it did? Yeah. I just tried it on a new Deb 10 box. Oh, really? Yep. Huh. All right. Well, that's good. OK. <laughs> well, let's just, um, did you guys run the purge command? Yeah. OK. Um, well, if that's the case, then if that worked for you, Jfred, then uh, then we can just do we can just reinstall it again, and it should start by default. Um, did, did is it running on ninety ninety? Yep. Okay, cool. So yeah, we can just install it again then, I guess, uh, and then it should work. So you just do apt install cockpit, and then I'll download everything again. Um, was there any command that you did to start it up, or how did you see that it was running? It just went there in a web browser. Okay, cool. So if you go to on your on your the uh, the tab that you had before, that is your IP address. So again, for me, it's forty five three three nine four at one nine six, and then if you do a colon and then do ninety ninety at the end. Uh, you should be taken to a thing that says that there's security risk. This is fine because this is our server that we set up ourselves, so we know that it's fine. Uh, you don't want to accept these things if it's not something you set up yourself. Um, but if you put dash or the colon 9090 at the end, um, it should redirect you to this, and you want to accept the risk to continue. And then you should be brought to a page that looks like this. Uh, this is your login page for Cockpit. And you can put in, um, for username, we didn't make a new user account. You're probably going to want to do that, but that's in the guide um, that I linked for this class. Uh, but for right now, you can put root and then the password of the server that you made. So for me, I'm going to put in my password. And it's going to take me to this page. So uh, I'll post an example of what mine looks like here so that you can make the same for yours. So it will be your IP 9090, like that, in your web browser. Everyone, did people get it or? Sorry, to, I know it was a little bit confusing. I switch. Cool. Yep. Yeah, it works on my end. Cool. So now you can like look up stuff about your server. Um, this will show you some logs, uh, what kind of storage you have, um, just logs for the storage. Um, the way that you log in is um, you type in the username is root and then the password that you use to log into the server over SSH, same password. The username is root. So you can see some stats about networking, um, different accounts that you have. Um, you can create a new account, which is cool. I didn't even know you could do that. I haven't messed around with cockpit too much, but it's a nice little graphical way to interact with your server. Um, what I really like, though, about it is you can drop into a terminal right here. Yeah, the so this, terminal. Cool. Yeah. So you it's a uh, but this is something that you built and that you're running yourself. And it only took a couple of commands from a new server to get that up and running. So um, from here, you can build anything you want on this because this is running on a port that's not like the normal port, the normal ports being the HTTP, HTTPS thing that we were talking about earlier, um, where you don't need to put the colon and then the ports at the end. Um, you can leave this on your server and set up something else on here and then monitor the health of your server by still accessing um, at the same location, the 9090 thing. So, uh, so this is like a good thing to leave with because as you're getting used to managing a server and working with them, you can... This is a nice way to look at it. Um,
but you should also try to learn the the way to navigate in a in a in a file system as well. But but yeah, so that's um that's it. That's um the whole demo. And uh, thanks for sticking around. I know we definitely went a half hour over. The only um the last things I wanted to say were. Um, Uh, these are some resources that I think are pretty good. There's a blog called Nixcraft, who I really like because they often make these guides that are like very short and they will just show a couple examples of how to do something. Um, the Linux docs are pretty good too for guides. If you're looking to set up a, a Minecraft server, uh, that was actually one of the ones I wanted to go through today, but we weren't going to have enough time. Um, but that one's actually a pretty easy one to set up. So if you're interested, I link that here. It's a pretty short guide. Um, you can set that up on this server. Uh, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, Raspberry Pi projects are a great thing to get into for Linux. Um, you do have to go through the install, but they have lots of great guides on it. So you should be able to get your way around now that you know how to navigate a Linux file system a little bit more. Um, Stack Overflow is great. Also use the man pages first, but as a secondary, Stack Overflow is pretty great. Um, the R Linux uh, on Reddit is also pretty good. Um, if you want to set up a DNS name, so for me, with uh, the example that we used today, Christine Pook, the ChristinePook.com one, to do something like that, uh, you can follow some guides that I linked. This isn't going to show anything. Oh, I did install Apache on here, so that's why it shows that. But um, if you wanted to set up your server to a DNS name so that you didn't have to type in the IP address and you can put a domain name. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be emailing the slides and the links. The links will be in the slides, so. Um, cool. So um, you can follow that guide. Um, if you wanna set up a LAMP stack, which is what is needed for WordPress, there's a, a link for that as well. And uh, Wanted to mention that we have open houses on Sundays uh, during the quarantine, 3 p.m. for Hive 76. This is the link to to add to go to it. I actually don't know if it remains the same every time. Do you know, Jay Fred? I think they've been reusing the same one, but we should probably use like a like a custom one instead of one of the. Well, it's going to be this one for today, so yeah. <laughs> I'll post it. Um, if you're interested, um, it's just a casual like meetup to like talk and you know talk about projects you're working on or whatever. If you're interested in becoming a member, um, there's a link right here. Um, it's only fifteen dollars a month to start out with, and that gives you access to the space, which unfortunately you can't use right now. But uh, <laughs> but eventually you will be able to use it. So um, we also have a Slack channel, and we talk about stuff in there. So that's kind of fun. We also have an IRC if you're into IRC too. Um, but yeah, that's it. Any questions? Christine, just a real quick one. This is yeah. Gary. Um, at the library, we've been using the Raspberry Pis and yeah. you can run uh, Minecraft on the Raspberry Pi. Yes. And what we've been doing is we've been using Python uh, to modify Minecraft. Cool. So in other words, Instead of you putting blocks together, you can pro programmatically yeah. uh, make a house. Okay, this is the code for making a building, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. So would I be able to run, uh, currently, since we're not at the library, and so no one has the hardware, yeah. what I was looking for was to set up a server and be able to um, to see if, I, if, that, if that was feasible. Yeah. Um, on with a Minecraft? 100%. Um, okay. Well, so that I'm not, I'm actually not sure about that because uh, that the version of Minecraft that it sounds like you're using is the education edition or like, or the Raspberry. It's the one that's, it's the one that comes with the Raspbian. Yeah. I, I don't think uh, Microsoft has released a version of that that'll run on machines other than a Raspberry Pi. So that, oh, really? yeah, my Minecraft is a, is a, it's like a it's a proprietary Microsoft game, and they right. have. Uh, I don't think there's a version that'll run on a on a on 
an x86 server, which is what all of these are, which is what all of these are. So I think yeah, I don't know yeah. much too much about Minecraft, but um, uh, if you're looking to set up a Minecraft server, there's a guide for that. Um, but if you're using a special edition, then there, yeah, you might run into some issues. But well, I, I've got something I can play with. Probably, yeah, probably. you got something yeah. you can play with. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, you can try to hack around it. I mean, there's yeah, always a way. The, just the matters of how uh, how determined or stubborn you are. <laughs> For me, it's always the stubbornness. But um, okay, thank you, Christina. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Um, if I had known so many people were interested in Minecraft, I would have uh, maybe have done that as a tutorial. But that would have been a little bit longer. So uh, I don't know if we would have had enough time. But yeah, any other questions? Um, thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much, Christine. I am always happy to give people the entry point to the world of Linux. It's a great, it's a great place to be, and um, yeah, uh, maybe we'll have some future meetings. We'll see. But thanks for coming out today. Um, I will send out the slides in a follow-up email, um, as well as some of the commands that we ran during the class that were not on the slides. And I'll, I will send you the link to where it's posted. I think on YouTube I'm going to use, but I have to like edit it a little bit and figure out how to do that since I've never really done that before. So, um, but thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. And I hope this gives you the stepping point that you were looking for and whatever you're working on. And yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Have a thanks. good one. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Hey, Christine. Yeah. I, uh,